the uh, Gemara that we learned was talking about anything that included in it any um, type of the five grains. So we said it has a bracha, it deserves a bracha, when the Gemara came to that, that was a statement of Rav and Shmuel. The Gemara came to that because initially it spoke about uh, two things, Daisa and Chavitz Kadeira. And we said that Daisa, which means porridge, and Chavitz uh, uh, Kadeira is um, some type of a mixture of flour, uh, honey, and oil. So the, uh, the Gemara said that there's an argument what bracha to recite. If it was real porridge, regular porridge, so everyone agrees that on regular porridge, the bracha is bayre mine mezaynos. But if it has in it this extra honey, similar to Chavitz Kedera, so there, uh, the Gemara says there's an argument. Rav Yehuda says shahako. Rav Kahana says bayre mine mezaynos. The Gemara said that it seems like uh, Rav Kahana is correct. Uh, Rav Yosef said this. He says, uh, sounds like Rav Kahana's opinion because we know Rav and Shmuel, they said the statement, a blanket statement that uh, um, anything that has from the Chamesha Saminem, it always is Mazayinus. Anything that has from the five uh, species, anything with, that come, that has in it from the five grains, excuse me, from the five grains, spelt and oats and wheat and rye, and um, barley, any of those five grains is going to be the bracha, creates types of sustenance. And the, um, the, uh, the Gemara now is going to discuss The Gemara here is going to discuss um, two versions of Rabbi R R Rav and Shmuel's statement. The only thing is, it's not questionable if he said one of which one he said. He said they said both. Rav and Shmuel said both of these statements, and there there's a reason why he says two very similar statements. And the Gemara is going to go through that now. So. The, the, I, I guess before we do this, I just want to emphasize that what the Gemara's main point is, is that whenever you have grain, even if it's a minority in the food, it's considered the primary food item. So even a small amount of it makes it the prime, it gives it, makes it considered primary. Normally we would say the majority, if you have the majority of one food item, that gives it, that makes it primary. Here, it has grain. The grain is the primary food item, and the bracha would be on the grain. And the grain often would be mezainis, and that would be the, the, um, the, the bracha on the grain. And these scenarios would be mezainis, and that would be the primary food item. Unless it's made into bread. If it's made into bread, then it would be hamaisi again. That would be also the main, the primary food. But the, um, the Gemara here is emphasizing that the... Uh, that whenever there's grain in it, that becomes the primer. And I did, we did mention, we spoke about schnitzel, and we also spoke about uh, Twizzlers. And um, we also mentioned that Teisvis over here says that if it's a binder, you don't have to, then, then you, wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't recite a mezainas if it's only used to bind the food. And um, what's interesting is Taisvis over here, and this is important to mention, Taisvis ends off, he says, if something's only a binder, you don't recite very minimizinus. But he says that it's good to eat it within a meal. After you said hamoitzi. So let's say you have flour as a binder for something, for some food. 
you would eat it in a meal that you recited Hamaitzi on it, that you made the bre- blessing on the bread, and you would exempt, you would exempt this food item that has flour, that has uh, some grain in it, that mu- that's used as a binder. Now, why is Taisva saying that we should be machmer? What is his reason? What would the logic be? So there are two ways of understanding it, and the, the commentaries say one of them is the correct way and the other isn't. Yes, Ezra. Um, since um, the five grains are uh, things that are listed in the Torah, and um, it might be a, a a Torah requirement, and so therefore that's the reason why you would have to do it that way. Hmm. Are, are you talking about the, the first bracha or the or the after bracha? Well, the after bracha we all know for sure because it says That's that's not a problem. I think the. The first one, we also had the discussion saying that because you are uh, increasing the spirituality of the food by um, um, and therefore there you would, you would need the, uh, the brecha before you eat it. Right, okay. The, the thing is, the bracha before you eat it is definitely um, the accepted understanding is that it's not biblical. It's rabbinical. Uh, the, what? It's rabbinical. Rabbinic. The bracha on bracha mezayna is also the common understanding, although there are sources, what you're saying, that it's, it could be biblical, even uh, any of the seven species that Israel is blessed with. And we, we, we even saw that there might be, it might, the Gemara might hold that uh, at one point, we saw that in the Gemara, that there was a thought that maybe that would be biblical. But the, uh, the common understanding is it's not biblical. Uh, it, it's an argument in the Rishonim, in the commentaries of the Gemara, but the common understanding is that we don't look at the al Hamichya or the al Ha'etz to be biblical. We look at it as, as rabbinic. Um, and, but about what you're saying, that the, the bracha, the obligation to recite a bracha, uh, after, well, after the, um, the, uh, w- this item, this food item that has a little flour in it, uh, yeah, I, I guess you could learn that way, that it's, the, that, you know, the question is, would it be, uh, ala mechbi or not, if you just said a bari nefash, it's an interesting insight, what you're saying that it really boils down to, according to those opinions, it could be biblical. According to those views, that, that uh, the afterbrach on the seven species is biblical. So this would be an issue of, um, you know, being that it has flour in it, it might be a biblical obligation. And if you're just going to say a bari nefashis, you're not fulfilling uh, that obligation. And uh, therefore, you should be extra careful. So uh, what you're saying is a very good point, I think, Ezra. Um, I, I was actually trying to figure out more what is, why is Tysus, what is he unsure of? Is he, is Tysus saying, I'm unsure if flour is there as a binder? I don't know for sure if that gives it the bracha of the Zainis or it doesn't give it the bracha of the Zainis. Is Tysus unsure of that? And therefore he's telling you better eat it in a meal because I am not sure what the halacha is. It's a question of what the correct halacha is when, when flour is used as a binder. It might not give the, uh, might not make it considered the primary uh, part of this food because it's only used as a binder. Therefore, I'm not sure what the halacha is. Or, and this is the, the correct, the way the, the commentaries understand this is that it's not a question of halacha. If the flour is used as a binder, it is definitely not mezainas. You definitely have no issue. The problem is 
that we don't always know practically is the flour only used as a binder? It's hard sometimes to, de to decide. Is the flour really only a binder in this food? Maybe it also gives it flavor and texture. It's hard for us, even, even though we, you know, we eat food all, all, all day and we taste it, but we don't really know always if this food is sometimes very hard to decide. Is the, is the flour in it a binder or not only a binder? And therefore, because it's so unclear sometimes, Taisa says to be practical, you have to, it's hard, for, it's hard to judge what the law is in these scenarios because, not because we don't know what the, what the halacha should be. We know the halacha. It's hard to apply the halacha. It's hard to apply the law to know, is this food, for example, what I'm telling you about Twizzlers or licorice, that the, the rabbis are all arguing. Is it Zionist or is it Shahakal? They all argue about it. And the reason they argue is because they're trying to figure out, is the flour considered a binder or is it not? Maybe it adds texture and flavor to the, to the, to the, to the licorice. And because it's so unclear to figure out how to apply this law, that's why Tysus says that you have to eat it within a meal. So again, Tysus is, according to the way the commentaries understand this, Tysus, he's not worried about the, the halacha is clear. It's how to apply the halacha. The halacha is if it's a binder, you have no problem. You can. You don't have to recite a mezainus on it. If it's a binder, it's, it's if that's all it is. No, it's it's not a it's not a problem. Not a not a mezainus. Yes, uh, Avram. Rabbi, go back a bit. If you have a bowl of raisin bran, bran, mm -hmm. bran, I don't know whether it is considered wheat or whether it's obviously the husk or whatever. If it is, you would say mizanot, and then after that, on hate on hates for raisins. I don't think so. I would think they're all, it's, the, it's all covered with the, uh, with the, um, with the, with the bran. So the bran would be considered wheat, wheat, like wheat. Yep. Okay. And it would be okay. like, yeah, like similar to a cookie right. because they, yeah, they, they make it into like, uh, you know, it's, it's ground into flour and then it's, um, and then it's baked. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, what? Let me just pull out my, my book. Right Rabbi, there. wasn't Abraham asking the question about if, would you say two brachot on, on, on raisin bread? Yeah. So if there, I guess if the, ra if the raisins aren't that many, then it's, it's just mezonot. But if um, the raisins are as, you know. Yeah, uh, I would think the raisins are not eaten alone. But let me just make sure here if the, uh, I don't like to, uh, um, I, since I don't eat it often, um, or almost never, yeah, I just want to see what they say here. Raisin bran mazonos. Yep, they don't say the bracha on the uh, on the raisins, even though it's called raisin bran. And then the raisin word is first, so you have uh, in the name, but, but doesn't uh, doesn't give it a bracha. But yeah. the raisins give it the flavor, because yeah. bran really has absolutely very little flavor. Okay, but giving it flavor doesn't uh, won't change won't uh, change the won't won't make you you don't recite the bracha because of the the flavor you recite the bracha for for the main the, as we're seeing here it's the mezainis that has some flavor to it and that becomes the primary. Rabbi, I think the the initial point that was brought out the one the one where he said. Uh, if there is any kind, uh, it, it, if any of the five grains appears, then you make a bohemian uh, emezonot. I think that that isn't that because of the 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 chashivut of the fact that these five grains are spelled out um, um, particularly in 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 the Torah, and because of that he feels that it is important that you give it that hashivut that appears there? I didn't learn it that way. Um, I learned it that it has to do with the fact that they are sus sustaining. More they are primary for sources of sustenance. And being that they're primary sources of sustenance, they would... Uh, you know, they would have the bracha mesainus. Um, the Gemara is going to discuss another food item that's not 
part of the five species. Now, in the Torah, really, the, 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 it only mentions two. It mentions chita and soira. Um, so it doesn't really mention all, all five. It mentions two as the, um, in, when it talks about the, 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 the grains that Israel is blessed with. The only thing is that the other three are considered included in those two. So what you're saying is not totally wrong, that they are, I, I guess you would say that they're included in the being, that Israel is blessed with those. Um, let me just pull up over here. <laughs> it says over here that spelt is a species of wheat and oats and rye are species of barley. So, you know, So um, anyway, my, my point is that um, what you're saying is not wrong, but later on in the Gemara, a little while, we're going to see that there's something called Eiriz, Eiriz and Doichen. And the Talmudic translation, the, the translation of the Talmudic word Eiriz and Doichen is subject to an argument between the rabbis. According to, uh, according to, most, uh, according to most opinions, Eiriz means rice, and Doichen means millet, but some say it's the opposite. In any event, the Gemara there discusses that maybe one of them would be Mezainus, Eiriz. It talks about Eiriz being Mezainus also. Now, Eiriz is definitely not one of the fruits that Israel is blessed with. And yet, it's being given that same bracha, Barim Mezainus. So I think that proves that the concept of, of, um, of Mezainus is not only given to to the, um, to the foods that Eretz Yisrael is blessed with. But it doesn't really prove what you're saying not to be correct, because what you're saying still could be correct. We're going to see that th this, uh, this idea that these foods are always primary um, don't apply. The, the fact that these foods are always primary, that is something unique to, uh, to these five grains. So maybe, maybe what you're saying is, is, is true, but I, I didn't learn it that way. I learned that it has to do with the fact that these are major sources of sustenance. Of course, all food gives sustenance, but these are the main, these are the primary forms of sustenance, and therefore it has, the, um, it has this uh, chashiva. So I, I guess maybe a proof to that, 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 um, that we, we wouldn't say it's prime, I, I guess maybe a proof would be from the fruits parts that are the, the, the seven species. We don't consider the seven species fruits to be primary if they're mixed with other fruits. We wouldn't call them primary just because they're from the seven species. So if you were to have a mixture of fruits, let's say, with fruits from the seven species, we wouldn't consider them primary. So maybe that would be a proof that this is only because of the mazoin, the sustenance status that gives it this, uh, this special thing that's called primary. So that, that's just a, a thought that comes in. Anyway, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting thought that you mentioned. It's something that we'll have to think about, um, uh, you know, and see how it plays itself out throughout the chapter. Because this, it is a very uh, complicated chapter that we're learning. Many of the yeshivas, they spend months and months on this chapter. So it's, it's quite a... Uh, you know, quite quite a complicated uh, chapter, but anyway, that that would be my my thought, Ezra. But thank you for uh, share uh, for, for asking that. It's a good question, something to think about. Yes, uh, Ben. Yeah, I wanted to ask the the Chavitz Kedera and the Daisa. Do they both have grain from the five meaning, and do they both have dvash? I mean, honey. So the, the, um, the, the, the case that we are talking about in our Gemara, yes. They both have flowers and both why, have honey. 
then how did they how did they come up with two different uh, uh, in the beginning how did they come one up with two different names because one of them is 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 a f- made with flour and the other one um is made with with not with flour but with more crushed grain with broken but they are grain, both from broken the five minutes. yeah 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 but they're different it's a different food in other words some people would never eat this food uh, i wouldn't have that on my table uh, you know but the other food that tastes delicious it depends, you but know. They don't, go, on, they don't go by taste. taste. I thought they go no, by... No, I'm yeah. saying they're, they're two examples. They're two examples of different... They're yeah. considered different foods. I'm just saying that they're two different foods. You, you wouldn't... Uh, it has two different names because they are two different foods. It's not the same thing. Yeah. Uh, that's my point. Okay. I don't see the difference, though, but... Well, well because one is, is, is made... You have to think about a very... Uh, um, like a, a flour, <laughs> mixture of flour. Imagine one person has oatmeal... Right, another person may, uh, puts flour in their uh, bowl and uh, puts hot water there. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna t- it's gonna be very different than uh, than an oatmeal. Uh, you know what I mean? A, a a porridge with like you know with oatmeal is, is gonna look different than the flour. You know, the, the oatmeal is similar to the chavitz. Uh, uh, the oatmeal is similar to, to the um, to the. And then uh, the same ingredients. If one is a little more liquid, or less liquid. No, one is a little more coarse. One is much more coarse than the other. Okay. But um, the the chavitz kadera has the flour. The daisa is more the like the broken. Uh, the, it's more broken grain, grain that's pounded. Yeah, but the grain is the flour is made from the same grain. Yeah. It's just Listen, fine it's ground, that's all. It's, you know, it's like it's like the difference of farina and uh, an oatmeal. Some people, you know, you put out farina, they love it. And, uh, you know, some people like the oatmeal. Different, different foods. You don't call it the same thing. Okay. You yes, can uh, eat potatoes 10 different ways too, but you're not going to make a separate blessing of mashed potatoes or not mashed potatoes, you know. Right, uh-huh. I don't uh-huh. see the difference. But right. well, it's not a, the, the bracha is the same. In our no, Gemara, the, Rabbi Yehuda and Kahana said two different blessings. Not, not for different foods. The same, they're the same food. And, uh, they, yeah, each for the one same says food, they say, they, yeah, for the same food, they said two different blessings. That's what I don't understand. You don't understand why there are two opinions? Yeah. Well, the reason, the two opinions, one is saying that the main thing is the honey. What's the main reason why you're eating it? Yeah, but both have honey. Yeah, but, but again, let, let, let's let's start from square one. There's two foods. One is more like a farina, very ground up, like flour. One is more hard. One is more thicker, coarse, and it's like oatmeal. Okay, these two foods, they both have honey. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Rav Kahana says both of them are mizaynas. Okay. The other right. opinion, Rav Yehuda says both of them are shahak. Rabbi Yehuda makes a lot of sense because Rabbi Yehuda says you go by majority. Majority in these foods is the honey. Right. You make it very sweet, and that's how people like it, and that's the, what people eat it for. And the people, the majority is the honey, and that's uh, that's it. The bracha should be shahakal. Makes it makes sense. People eat it for the honey. It might have majority honey, so that would be the bracha. The two opinion, two ways of learning it. It's either majority okay. or people eat it for that. Rabbi Yehuda makes a lot of sense in both cases. Rav, Rav, Rav Kahana also makes a lot of sense. Because Rav Kahana says, listen, anything that has a little, has flour, that's the main thing. I don't care what people like it for the honey. It has majority honey. The fact is it has flour, it has, a, a, or a grain. That itself gives it the primary status. In Rav and Shmuel, they bring that out in a much more clear way. They say, you know what? Anything that has grain is, is going to be that way. Not just this food, it's, you're going to call it that the flour is the main thing. Anything like this that has grain is going to be considered that it's the main, that's the primary. We always give uh, grain the primary status. That's what Robin Shun will say. So these are now the it's two clear. Things. It's clear? Okay. Now it's Avram, clear. <laughs> you, Avram. Uh, you, uh, you're muted. You're muted. On rice, rice is sustaining. I was told, I may have got this wrong, but because it is sustaining, then you say a mizanot, you don't say the final blessing to it. What do you say on rice? It's a very good question. In the Gemara, we're going to learn the source of rice in about 
either today or tomorrow, or the next day, the next few days, we're going to be learning about it. But what they, what they told you is not wrong. That I'll okay. tell you. I just don't want to lose you. I, I don't want you to, um, I don't want to give you the final answer <laughs> because we're going to be seeing go back and forth in the Gemara. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, yes, Susan. Okay, if, if you're drinking tea made from ginger and honey and lemon, what is the correct, what is the main, what is the main thing? And what, so, what blessing do you say? Right. So you're asking a good question because we just, we just did learn Himalta or Himlasa, however you want to pronounce it. Um, it's this Aramaic word, Himlasa, um, that we learned on uh, Thursday or Friday that uh, the bracha said is very pre hadama, right? And that would seem to be ginger, honey, and uh, probably water, right? Uh, but but uh, ginger, uh, we don't uh, say I mean, it doesn't either. stay so clearly that there's water added, but it's a mixture of ginger. But the, there is a difference. You're drinking tea. Um, it, the fact is, that case is where you're eating the actual ginger. <laughs> and you're drinking your tea, you're not eating the ginger. Right. You're drinking some water that's, that the ginger is steeped into yeah. the, the water. So you're drinking tea, basically. So the bracha is shahaka. The bracha is on the tea, it's shahaka. So but if you would have himla what, stuff, what the tea is made from, it's considered a drink. It's water that has some spice. Water that has basically. flavor. Okay. It's water what with if you flavor. add honey to your tea? And what's the brach? What's the brach on honey? I, I thought my name is a note. Honey? Oh, it's not? Okay. No, no, no. So what is honey? So it's what hako. Blessing on honey? Where does honey come from? From a bee. Right. From honeycomb. Right. But uh, the hako, thing is that okay. the honey is shahako. It's a, the brach on honey would be shahako. Okay. Because it's one of those. It's definitely not the bracha from the fruit. It's it's changed from the pollen that it that it's made from or whatever or the bee and it goes through the bees process. It's uh, the bee spitting out. Um, so it's it, it's uh, the bee spits out the honey and basically it's uh, it's shahako. Okay, so uh, so um, the Gemara here is going to say the two these two terms that Rab and Shmuel. Are gonna um, are gonna we're gonna hear hear two statements from Robin Shmuel. Gufa with three lines up from the bottom. Um, actually, we have Shlomi Yosef. Just one second, David. Shlomi Yosef, can you hear me? It's not okay. Yes, uh, David. Yeah. Um, when I was in yeshiva, there was a common question we used to ask a theoretical question. Once in a while, the yeshiva would serve hamburgers or meatloaf. But the thing was that the cook would try to ex extend the beef by putting in maybe 30 or 40 percent wheat flour. So it was a very, very high percentage of wheat. So mm -hmm. the question was, what's the kavana? What's the intention? Do we follow the intention of the cook? which is to extend the beef as much as possible by putting as much flour as, as she can in the beef and, and to get away with it and still look at, make it look like beef? Or do we follow the intention of the students, which is to eat the meat, not, not the flour? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we, we all made a shot call, but it was an interesting uh, back and forth uh, theoretical question. What's the, do we go by the intention of the eater or the intention of the cook? Now that's a tough question. Um, it would seem that you go by the intention of the one eating it who's benefiting from it. You know, why are you eating it? Um, that would be what it would seem like, you know. The, um, but you have to take into consideration that, you know, the, the, I mean, Meatloaf seems to be an interesting uh, thing because it, it's, it's uh, you know, it has, it, 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 it has all that flour or breadcrumbs in it. 
Um, I think I looked it up the other day because we mentioned it, and I'm not so uh, I don't, I don't uh, not fami- so familiar with meatloaf. But uh, here it says shahakal in this one, and in uh, in one one in one place the uh, in one of the um, um, one of the bracha books, and in the other bracha book it says. Uh, if it, with matzah meal as a binder, shahako, with breadcrumbs or matzah meal added for taste, mezainais. And if you're eating this as your main meal, and the only thing in your, if this is the kviyasuda, you could even recite hamaitzia. It looks like bread. So they, they want to say it could be hamaitzi. So that... Rabbi, didn't yes. you learn... You you just we just had the discussion with Tosfot. He said if it's a binder, then it's shakel. shakel. Okay. So here it says it depends. If it's a binder, shakel, that's Tosfos. If it's not only as a binder, but it's added for taste, breadcrumbs or matzah meal added for taste. So uh, they say mezainas. That's also our gemara. Anything that has, uh, and it doesn't have to have majority, right? Even if it's not majority, it would still, it would be, it was added if it has flour, it has this uh, matzah meal or uh, breadcrumbs. Now, I'm trying to think, what would be if it had flour? Or is that not common in, in the meatloaf? You just wouldn't put the flour? Or wouldn't, uh, I'm thinking if it had flour, also the bracha should be the same thing. I don't know, is that because it's not common? That's why they don't write it? They only write breadcrumbs or matzah meal. I'm wondering if it would be flour. I wonder if that would be the same thing. Anyone make a meatloaf there? The they, were using it, they were using it as a beef extender to extend right. the amount of beef. So did they put flour or matzah meal? I didn't get that you close to the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbi, matzah meal is made from flour. I know, but still, it's uh, uh, the matzah meal starts off with with uh, hamaitzi. It's like uh, you know, it's already. Uh, anyway, um, either way, whatever it is, you see here that there is room to say um, that it should be, uh, you know, what the, that the bracha would be um, w- would be mezainus. There's room to say that it's a that's mezainus if it's not a binder. It depends if it's a binder or not. If it's used as a binder or not as a binder. And obviously the chef was using it not as a binder, uh, using it uh, as part of the sustenance, wanted to fill the, fill the bachram up with it. And, uh, you know, but so Rabbi, the question to, is, food. what did David say as a, as, a, as a blessing when he ate it? Yeah, he said shahakal. And the truth is in the Lubavitch uh, bracha guide over here, the, they seem to just say um, meatloaf, is shahakal and they base it on um okay so he was right he, he said shahakal chapter seven one but uh chapter seven one uh it says over here meat yeah meat is shahakal but they they base it on one second three three <clears throat> three three when is the flour the grain considered the principle when you put it to give flavor in the in the in the mixture but if you put it there only to color the mixture or to uh, bind it and make it firmer a little firmer then it becomes secondary to the food to thicken it somewhat now that's an interesting thing. I'm glad you. I'm glad I looked this up now, because he adds a word here that Tosfos uh, doesn't say. Even if you're doing it to make it thicker, it becomes. It can become. Um, it can become secondary to the food. When is that? If the gray, if the uh, if you don't have in mind for the principal food, but if you have in mind also for that for eating that, so even though it's not the primary, but it's um, like for example, um, flour 
that's mixed with honey. They call it lekach, which is honey cake. And the majority is the honey. And the main eating is for pleasure, sweetness. And eating the, the flour is not so much of a primary purpose. Nevertheless, the flour is considered the main thing. And you would recite, um, um, and, um, and then he deals with why it's not Hamoitzi. But, um, but it's interesting that he writes this, that, um, that when you put, when it's, when it's put in there to give a taste, that is, uh, that then the flower takes on a major, it becomes primary, or if the purpose in eating it is for the flower. If that's at least part of the purpose. If that's at least part of the purpose, the flower, then, um, then you would, um, even though it's not the primary reason, but it's, it is an important, it is an important factor. Rabbi? Yes. Now, now you're bringing in taste, which goes back to my question about raisin bran. Uh-huh. Okay. So here you're being given raisins in order to give the brand brand taste. Mm -hmm. So using the same logic. Right. I should be able to uh, bump up the the bracha to the next level, mm -hmm. which means that the raisin should also be given a height a, along with the bran, which is a mezonot. Otherwise, there would be no consistency in what is being written and and said here, versus what we said before right if so you, you have understand to, if you understand my meaning so you have to differentiate between something that's primary which obviously in the raisin brand the primary thing is the fact that you're eating you're eating breakfast you're eating you know you're you're using this as a sustaining this is meant to, the, the brand is obviously the main the main part of your meal the raisins is considered secondary now, when it comes to the, the, an issue of a food item that's flour is mixed into it, then we always check if the flour is the main, if it's, if, a, if it's the main thing, obviously that would take, that's number one. Number two, even if it's not the main thing, but if it's there giving taste, it also becomes the main thing. So number one, we go by the, the ichor. Then, if the if if the if the thing that's not the the primary is flour made from flour, then we we have to measure that and see that would be the second step. Do we, do, do, would we still consider that the main thing? And then we we judge that based on flavor. But um, in this scenario, again, I, I'm not saying my own. This is not my own uh, ideas. It's clear that raisin bran is zinus. We're just, we're trying to understand the reasons and. This is, uh, we're trying to figure out how you go, what, how do you judge the main, the primary, and how do you judge secondary? And what we're seeing is that the, the primary, obviously, is on, on certain foods, is, 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 is simple. You, you look at what's the main, you know, the main thing, what's the main purpose, the main interest. Uh, but then uh, you always have to check and see if the secondary item, if that has any flour in it or grain, if it does, then it might, then, then we would have to go to the next step, the next job of figuring out if that is considered uh, still a secondary food. Now that we know that it's grain, would we be able to continue uh, using that logic that it's, uh, that it's uh, second? Can, can we continue that and say it's secondary or do, does, it, does it become a primary because we, we realize that it has some other purpose like giving it flavor? Okay, so... Um, so let's go back to the Gemara. So we have, we're, we're on page 36B. We're at the end of 36B. We're going to hopefully turn the page uh, today. So we're at 36B and three lines up from the bottom, Gufa. Gufa. Um, 
don't, don't play the piano. Gufa. Gufa means that we, uh, we learned before. We, we, we mentioned this statement before. Rav Shmuel, Rav and Shmuel, Damri Tarvayu, that both of them say, Anything that has in it from the five grains, we recite on it a very minimum. If it has in it from the five grains, the Itmar Nami, and we also learned Rav and Shmuel, Rav and Shmuel, Damri Tarvayu, both of them say, Call Shahu anything that is from the five grains, We recite on it the bracha So we've got two things here. We have anything that has in it from the five grains or anything that is from the five grains. Either of them are going to be mazinus. Again, these are two separate statements. Anything that has in it from the five grains is mazinus. Anything that is from the five grains is mazinus. So the Gemara is bothered. What do we need both of these statements for? It would seem redundant. Utsricha and they are needed. The Iash mean and Koshahu, if it would only say whatever is from the five grains, Hava mean, I would say, I would have thought to say, Mishum de Isa Be'ene, because it is existing on its own. It is there on its own, and therefore it would obligate a Mazinus. Aval al Yadeta Arubais, but if it was mixed, with other items, loy, I would say it might not be mazinus. So the first statement that says anything that is from the five grains, all you know is something that itself is made from the five grains, like some type of porridge made from the five grains, it would be mazinus. But you wouldn't know if that was mixed with other food items, if it would still be a mazinus. Kamash Malon, it comes and lets us hear. Rav and Shmuel come and let us hear. Now we turn the page to the next page. We're on 37A. Kamash Malon, it comes and lets us hear. Rav and Shmuel come and let us hear. Kol Sheyesh Boy, that anything that has in it from the five grains, even though that's not the only food, there's other food items that are mixed with these five grains. Even then, it would be Mazinus. So anything that has in it, would be considered a mazinus, if it has in it from the five grains. Now, let it just say that statement. Anything that has in it from the five grains, and automatically you'll know that anything that is from the five grains is mazinus. So that's what the Gemara now goes to the other side. It says, what's the... What's the other, what's the reason why it doesn't just say this statement and not the other statement? The Iash Ma'inan, and if it would let us hear, call Sheyesh Boy, anything that has in it from the five grains, which would for sure teach us anything that is from the five grains is Mazinus. Have Amin, I would have thought to say, call Sheyesh Boy, Chameshas Haminim, anything that has in it from the five grains, in is considered the primary. The five grains are the primary and they're mazinus. Anything that has in it from the five grains, those five grains are the primary. That's what I would have learned from this. Aval but rice and millet, or millet and rice, depending on how you learn, there's two, two opinions what oirez and daichen is. It's either rice and millet or millet and rice. But but these two items, loy, would not be called the primary when they're mixed with other foods. So the five grains are called the primary, but not rice and millet. They would not be considered the primary when they're mixed with other foods. Mishum, because the al tarubas, they're mixed in a, they're put in a mixture. What would that imply? Avo isa be'ene, but if they would be alone, you would only have rice or only have millet. Nema, I would say, we would say, afilo iris v'deich nami. Uh, even Ayres and Daichen also Mavarchen Olaf Barimina Mazainis. You would recite on it the blessing of Mazainis when it's on its own. Kamash Malan, so Rav and Shmuel come and let us hear. Kol Shahu Mechamesh Saminim. Only foods that are from the five grains are Mazainis. 
That's when you say the bracha very min of zainus. That excludes lafuke eres v'doichen. That excludes rice and millet. The afilo ise be'ene. Even if they would be alone, loy mavarchen very min of zainus. We do not recite very min of zainus. Instead, you would recite a different bracha. What bracha would you recite? Shahakal. You would recite the bracha shahakal. That is the assumption of the Gemara at this point. Again, the Gemara is going to continue discussing this for a while. We're going to be going back and forth. But at this point, the Gemara says that we need to hear both statements of Rav and Shmuel because we want to, number one, we want to learn, we want to know, we want everyone to know that anything that has in it from the five grains, the five grains become primary even though they might not have been assumed to be primary, we consider them primary. The five grains always take on primary, almost always. We did find a few examples of where maybe exceptions to the rule, but generally they are the primary. The five grains, even if you don't think they're the primary, they're generally the primary. And additionally, we learned about the law of rice and millet, that if they are mixed with other food items, they do not become primary. And even if they're alone, they do not have the bracha of Mizaynas. That's basically um, what we learned so far. Rabbi, what would, the, what would the blessing be on quinoa? I thought quinoa is considered a grass. So they allow it on Pesach too. So quinoa is boye pri hoadama. It would not be like it would not be like oatmeal. It's not from the five grains, even mm -hmm. though it's a grain they found, uh, you know. Uh, but it's not from the five grains, and it doesn't get the bracha of um, mizaynus. So, okay. So, why would rice not be um, from the ground? Isn't it from the ground, or am I oh. wrong? No, you're right. Like it's a good question. Why wouldn't rice be? Bayre pre hardam. Where it's going in water, really. So we're going to see soon in the next Gemara now. But we're going to ask that question. So it's a very good question. We're going to discuss it in a minute. I'll wait. So let me go a little further, unless someone else has a question. Susan. Okay, no question. Okay, let's go a little further. The Ayres Vadaichan and on rice in millet or millet and rice. Um Lima Varchin on Bari Minimasinus, we do not recite a Bracha Mazinais. We hatanya a veal of a pasairas pas daichan. We learned in a brisa they brought bread made of rice and millet. You would recite on it the beginning bracha and the end bracha like a porridge. So it sounds that from this other source, again, we have a different source here, a brisa. And this brisa is actually from before Rav and Shmuel. And the Brisa says that on rice and millet, or millet and rice, or maybe just rice. Uh, uh, no, it says both. It says bread of bread made of rice and bread made of millet. That you would recite the bracha beginning and end like Maisa Kadeira. Like you would recite on Maisa Kadeira, which is like a porridge. And Vigabe Maisa Kadeira, and regarding Maisa Kadeira, uh, the Maisa Kadeira literally means the actions, the things that are made in a pot. The, the term refers to a porridge. So the um, the produce, the, the uh, yeah, Maisa, yeah, the workings from that, that are. Uh, that are made in a in a in a kadeira. Kadeira means a pot. So what what would it refers to porridge? So 
what does this mean to tell us? That the bread of rice and the bread of millet, you would recite Maise Kadeva like porridge. And what does it say about Maise Kadeva? In the beginning, one recites the bracha, and in the end, in the end, you would recite the bracha, one bracha that combines all three blessings. Now, what bracha is it that combines all three blessings? That's called al hamichya. Al hamichya, the term in the Gemara for al hamichya. It's called a bracha achas, one bracha, me'ein shalosh, a summary of three. It's the one bracha that summarizes all three blessings in the grace after meal. The bracha is al hamichya. It's the way the Gemara terms, the term the Gemara uses for al hamichya, the blessing after eating anything from the seven species. Um, so the Gemara is saying that uh, it sounds like bread of rice and bread of millet person would recite the bracha mezainasa. And that contradicts what we just said, because what we just said before is that uh, rice and millet don't seem to have this uh, importance of being called mezainas. And therefore, um, the, the Gemara earlier said, it's nothing like, that doesn't have anything to do with grain. It's not, we, we don't give it the, that, that, that importance of grain. And, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't have, it's not called primary. You don't recite on it, Mazinus. And here we're saying you could recite on it, Mazinus. Now, there is a way of understanding this. That. The Gemara is saying that it should be the bracha on rice and millet bread would be similar to, one of the commentaries learns it this way, it would be similar to the bracha on rice and millet that are made in a pot. In other words, the blessing on rice and millet bread is the same blessing as rice and millet that are made into like a porridge, into regular you know, rice and millet. And according to that, what it's basically saying is you always recite on rice and millet a bracha mezainais. Now, the Gemara's answer is that kemaise kedera v'loi kemaise. When it says it's like maise kedera, it's like, the, like a porridge, it means it's almost like a porridge. Similar, there's similarities. Kamaise Kadeira is similar to a porridge. The Mavarchan all of Tchilov Asaif, that you would recite on it a beginning bracha and an after bracha. That's in that sense, it's similar. Similar to a porridge that you would recite on it a beginning bracha and an after bracha. But like Kamaise Kadeira, but it's not exactly like Maise Kadeira. Because by the Elo Maise Kadeira, but Tchilov Mavare Bari Menu Mazainais, in the beginning you would recite Mazainais. And in the end, at the end, you would say this the summary of the three blessings. But here, rice and millet, in the beginning, you would recite the bracha shahakoil. But in the end, you would recite the bracha of that he creates many people and things that they're missing, things that they need, together with extra stuff, together with the extra things they have for pleasure. Baruch Hei blessed he is, is he who gives life to the world, or gives life forever. And um, the, uh, the Gemara is basically, uh, explaining here that the bracha on rice in millet is not mezainas, but it's really shahak. And Edith is asking a question 
that the Rajba asks over here and says, Shahakol, how could you say the bracha would be Shahakol? <laughs> should be like quinoa, it should be like uh, any other grain. It's not from the five, it's not from the five grains, I understand, but it should be the bracha should be. At least hadama, at least uh, from the ground, right? Why shouldn't it be? Why shouldn't it get the bracha from the ground of hadama? So this is a very good question, and uh, the commentaries do deal with this. So. On the, on, the, on, on the bread, it's not such a question because the bread you ground into flour. And since you ground it into flour, you lost the uh, importance of the rice and the, and the, um, and the millet. And because most people don't make rice and millet bread. And, um, and so, so you ruined it. And therefore, uh, even, if, um, even if you would recite Ha'adama on regular flour from wheat, there's a reason why that might at least retain somewhat of its status. Here, rice is never used to make into wheat. You don't normally make rice wheat or millet wheat. And therefore, um, uh, the bracha loses its, its importance of ha'adama, and uh, the rice loses its importance, I should say. The rice loses its importance of ha'adama. And therefore, it would be considered um, something that went down a level from the way its original state, and it would be shahako. But um, the, the question would be, what about if it's regular rice? Or, why would that? Why would that be considered? Why would that be considered shahako? Uh, so, the why would, if you just had regular rice and millet? The truth of the matter is, I mean, maybe you could learn that 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 he's not saying that it would be shahako, only if it's made into bread. Maybe you could learn that way. That only if it's made into bread does it have that. That, that law of shahako. Maybe you could say if it's regular rice or millet, I'm not, I'm, I, I, I don't wanna say this for sure, but I'm just thinking that that might be an answer that when it comes to the bread, then it actually turns into a shahako. If it's not actually made into bread, maybe it would be considered a uh, Um I'm gonna have to look and see if any of the commentaries mentioned that, that that's a, that's an, an option, a way of a way of learning, and so then you would be right that it actually would be hadama. It's not made into a cook into a cookies or cake or whatever ground into ground into uh, ground into um, into bread. Okay. In any event, um, uh, we're going to stop here. It's eleven o'clock, uh, and um, we'll continue tomorrow, Mr. Shem. Zaygazant, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi.